Welcome back to Before You Vote. Uh, the issue on the propositions, some are a little confusing with the language. So to sort out one of the most important ones, I think, Prop 138, is Danny Seiden from the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Mike. You're right. These initiatives, when you look at the ballot language, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. But I love that people are reading it and wanting to understand it. So I'll do my best to explain. So my producer on the radio side, we were talking on the air, so I'm not telling secrets. She it, votes early, mm -hmm. and she's informed because she yeah. does the show every day of the week two hours to fill out her ballot because she wanted to do her homework and research. Now, I don't think a lot of people are going to take two hours, but yeah. four pages in Maricopa County. Um, two stories very quickly. This week, uh, Denny's closing 150 locations across the country. TGI Fridays may be uh, going, filing for bankruptcy. The restaurant industry has been in a precarious position with food costs and labor costs and everything else. Let's talk about 138, which is the tipped worker protection. What does this mean and what does the language say? It, again, with something like Prop 138, since people are doing their homework, let me take a big step back really fast. So what the tip credit is in general, Mike, is this. A restaurant owner, a, you know, for a, any size, what they can do is they can uh, pay uh, the, the worker and, and, you know, uh, an amount uh, and allow for them to collect tips uh, on top of that. They're credited for their tips when they when they write out their paychecks. Now, um, that is on average, I think the median for a server nationwide right now is $27 per hour, well above our, our, our minimum wage. Right. And so that's how that that's how that has worked. Now, if they ever don't hit that minimum wage, so let's say $13 an hour in different parts of our state, $13 an hour, if they don't ever hit that, the restaurateur has to make up the difference. That's the way the business has been run for years. That's the way it's built. It allows for tips to happen. But what's been going on is out-of-state unions. It's never, it's never servers, bartenders, actual tip, tip workers. They're not the ones doing this. But out-of-state union workers have been trying to get rid of the tip credit model just to have what they call a one fair wage because they want everyone to make the same. And they've tried it in Massachusetts, Michigan, and now Arizona. Now, uh, we were able, along with Steve Chukri and the Arizona Restaurant Association, to knock off their attempt to take that away. Then what Steve and other restaurateurs did, they got together with the Restaurant Association and said, we want to make it harder for them to come back to our state and do this again. And that's what Prop 138 is. At its simplest level, it's protecting a tipped worker's ability to collect tips. And that whole business model of rewarding people for their sales and rewarding people for, you know, exceptionalism, helping them to grow. We've said this before. A service worker, you know, career path is very entrepreneurial. It, it, you can get cash right away. It's, it's a life-saving thing sometimes for people. And it's a whole career. You can start out as a server. You can go on to be a manager. And then you can own a restaurant. It, it's a fantastic career path. And they're looking to undermine all that. And the issue for me also is these workers that are counting on those tips, as you said, the cash part of it. You're talking about people that are adjusting schedules to fit children's oh, lifestyles, sorry. and they can get that cash on the nights they work, and, and their economy is improved, that, and their family. That, that's 100% right. If you start a new job, you won't see a paycheck sometimes for almost three weeks. You're instant. You're instant when you're a tipped worker, and that's why it's so important that we protect that. We protect that way of life. And as you said, again, let's just get back to it. Restaurants are closing. I'm a former TGI uh, Friday server, actually, so it, it hits a little bit home to hear that what they're going through and to see what they're going through. And a lot of that comes from the, the way the model changed after COVID. A lot of our restaurants haven't really recovered all the way yet, so we should really care about that. But you know what? Those are some of the bigger chains. This really hurts small diners. You know, we hear from our members who own small restaurants in Payson uh, and, you know, um, Pine, and, th and they're saying this is about a quarter million dollars a year to shift this business model. And I don't know why. Nobody wants this. No Everyone one's complaining. My, yeah, no one's complaining. You know, again, if, if you have a bad actor, the law addresses that. You can go to, you can go to the Industrial Commission. They will they have to pay stiff financial penalties. But you know what? There's no complaints because right. restaurateurs want their servers to be happy. They want their servers to make money. The more tips they're getting, the more they're selling, the more everyone makes. That's the way it works. It is, again, it's a very merit-based system. You can see how passionate he is, and I think he's right. 138 is something we should be voting yes on, and I'm glad he was here. We'll be back.